So let's explore a little bit sin in the Quran. Um, I just chose sort of or, or sort of yeah, seen sort of 36 in the Quran, which speaks in sort of general terms about the tendency of humans to disbelieve. Never comes unto them a messenger, but they mock him. Verse 46, uh, when any signs of the Lord come to them, they turn away from it. Verse 77, has not man regarded how um, we created him of a drop, but he is a manifest adversary. And so um, Nikolai Sinai uh, summarizes what he calls um, a highly pessimistic anthropology or doctrine of teaching of human nature in the Quran. And we have different um, elements in the Quran which point to uh, humans uh, natural inclination to sin, um, sometimes described as a sort of hastiness um, in Surah Al-Anbiya, Surah Al-Isra, you can read those passages there. Uh, Surah Al-Adiyat, Surah 100, speaks of man as ungrateful to his Lord. Um, and then uh, there's this interesting phrase we find in, in Surah Al-Imran, uh, where it's said that um, in the passive now, Zuyina, I put that in red, Zuyina linnasi hubba shahawat, decked out fair to men is the love of lust. Now, it leaves a lot of room for interpretation because it's passive, but somehow humans have this inclination to love um, material human things, um, to love women, children, gold, silver, horses, cattle, etc., etc. The Quran at the, end, at the end, in a sort of exhortation, says, but there are better things with God. Okay, um, now who's responsible for this human uh, inclination to sin or to love worldly things? The Quran, on the one hand, insists that God is not God. Um, Surah so Yunus, surely God wrongs not men anything, but they wrong themselves. And then in Surah Al-An'am, we find uh, this verb again, Zayyina, which I think in our earlier translation was rendered as decked out. Um, uh, but you can uh, also see it as to adorn, possibly. Now in Surah Al-An'am, we, we find out who's responsible for this decking out or this adorning, and it's a shaitan or Satan. So you see there, I've put it in red in the Arabic, Zayyina lahum ash-shaytanu ma kanu ya'malun. So, uh, and this adorning is interesting. It seems to suggest that um, Satan has made evil things seem good to the unbelievers so that they continue down the path of destruction. Um, so, uh, and there again, we see um, this verb, um, and uh, thus those associates of theirs have decked out fair to many idolaters. So, so here, there's something curious, because the Quran, of course, insists that there's only one God, but it seems to give life or hypothetical um, uh, uh, existence to the gods of the unbelievers, and they're responsible for the adornment, much in the same way that in Surah Al-An'am, earlier in verse 43, uh, Satan is said to do this adorning. So um, now one can debate the association between the gods and the demons. Um, are the gods really just nothing? Or um, are they in fact somehow uh, uh, manifested through demonic action? But the Quran here is, uh, makes the associates of the unbelievers or the idolaters, that is the false gods, responsible for decking out or adorning. Now things get really complicated in a theological way when we see verses such as Surah the naml in uh, verse 4, where God himself does the tazyin, God himself does the decking out. Um, in this specifically for the unbelievers, though those who believe not in the here, hereafter, we have decked out fair for them their works, and they wander blindly. So um, as though God um, uh, sees that people are led are going astray, and he leads them further astray by making their evil works seem good. Now, we know in Islamic tradition, not everyone will agree with this interpretation of the text, but let's begin at least just with a plain reading of tazyin. Tazyin is something that can happen because Satan does it, because the associates or false gods do it, maybe demons, and God himself can do tazyin as well, or adorning or decking up. Okay, that's the plain reading. Let's start there. 
All right. Now, in Surat Yusuf, um, we see another reason for um, agency uh, behind human sin, and that is an element of the human person referred to as the nefs, sometimes translated as the carnal soul, um, but it generally seen to represent sort of this um, this instinct towards, <clears throat> excuse me, towards sin in all humans. So um, here we have part of the story of Joseph in Surat Yusuf, or the chapter of Joseph, um, where the wife of Al-Aziz, um, the biblical Potiphar, uh, has sought to seduce Joseph to lead him into fornication and to be guilty of fornication herself. And um, now she's confessing her sin. And um, she goes on to say, if you look at verse uh, 53, which is this one down here, yet I claim not that my soul is innocent, surely the soul of man incites to evil. Okay, and the Arabic there was, um, inna anefsa la amaratun bisu. So um, the soul, the nefs, um, commands one, I mean, incites is the translation we have here, but it may be more, <coughs> excuse me, more precisely, commands um, commands one to evil. Okay, and we'll see um, th some interesting translations of this, just to give you some examples of this particular phrase. Um, the soul is a persistent enjoiner of evil. Again, commander means something like commands. Pickthal, the soul enjoineth unto evil. Yusuf Ali is prone to evil. Um, uh, this translation um, of Shekhar is interesting, is want or tends to command him to do evil, okay? Um, but all seem to recognize that in Surat Yusuf, there's description of something within the human person that leads one to evil. I've written an article that's on my academia page on the relationship between the Quranic teaching of the nefs and the Christian teaching of original sin. If anyone is curious, they can learn more there.